Where was this team at? Where in the absolute hell was this Alabama football team in the second half, mainly the second half, against South Florida and Texas? Is this the same Bama team I'm watching, or is this 2020 Alabama or 2017 Bama? The Bama of old. Because this second half, everything clicked. Everything clicked. The offensive line clicked. Our receivers clicked. The defensive line clicked. Our edge rushers finally were able to get pressure on the quarterback consistently. Our secondary was nice. Our running game was incredible. Quarterback-wise, I thought played a much better job and did a much better job in the second half. It, it Everything clicked with this team. Everything clicked. And I'm happy, but I'm also pissed. Because if we would have got this effort against Texas, if we would have got this effort against South Florida, we could have been 4-0. We could have been in La La Land. We could have been celebrating. We could have been just happy and celebrating. For me, it's like, it's weird because we won, but I'm also pissed. Not because the score was 24 to 10. Not because we played poor in the first half. Like I said, when I'm watching the first half, I was more like, eh, like this is the same Bama team that I've watched. There's no point in getting mad. And all of a sudden in the second half, I'm yelling because I'm like, what? What the hell happened? Who is this team? Who? What is this? It is DJ Fluker out there? Is Barrett Jones out there? Is oh, is Cyrus Quanjo? And we're talking about freshman Cyrus Quanjo because I'm not talking about junior Cyrus. Freshman Cyrus Quanjo is he out there? Like what? Is Ryan Kelly playing at center in the second half? Like this team just looked. It was weird. It was weird. It was actually really weird. Um, but no, um, shout out to Alabama in the second half. They played a lot better. Um, shout out to Jalen Murrow. Jalen Murrow stood tough in the pocket. I think that throw when he made up the seam for that touchdown when he got hit and we all thought a lot of people were hurt, he got up and he was throwing his fist and he's fist pumping. I thought that might have, you can make an argument, that changed the complexion of the game. You can make an argument that maybe have, that that, that might have ignited this team. Like a, a flip was switched because Alabama just looked incredible. They looked incredible. Defensively, we ran a lot of uh, simplistic concepts, but we were getting home to the quarterback. We weren't just putting up. Well, first of all, we were putting pressure on the quarterback. We were forcing the quarterback to either bounce outside the pocket or we made him step up or, 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 or we made him climb upside the pocket. The problem is when he climbed inside, there was an interior pass rusher in his face. And that was either Tim Smith or Tim Keenan. Who, had, who probably had the best game I've ever seen Tim Keenan play. Normally, he's a great run defender, but today he might have been, been a better pass rusher than he was a better interior rusher. It was nuts. And I'm like, wh what the hell happened? How did a, a flip just switched? And maybe that this is similar to Alabama versus Auburn when they won that game and in the Georgia game, they just looked like, a, like a, a completely different animal. Maybe that this is that case in this scenario, but this team... Looked incredible in the second half. And the funny part is, guys, this team should have scored probably 50 points. Or at least close to that. They definitely should have been in the 40s. We had a lot of red zone opportunities that we blew. Whether if it was because of penalties. Whether if it was just because of mishaps. But the first half, and, 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 and we made a couple mistakes in the second half that kind of ruined it. But mainly the first half, when we were in the red zone, bad, like, bad snaps, penalties, mishaps, out of being out of position... Like we look like just the same Bama team that lost against Texas and lost and, and, and almost lost to South Florida, and to see this team just flip a switch like that is it's impressive. I I, I gotta admit that, that 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 caught me off guard. I didn't expect Bama to play like that in the second half. I just did not. They look like gangbusters out there. And some people will take a look at the team stats and it's similar. Like the teams like penalties were pretty close. Team stats, like they had like their yards. I actually think they actually gained, they out, they might have outgained Alabama a little bit. But Jace, Jace McKellen was averaging six yards per carry. I thought Rhoda had an okay night, but our offensive line in the second half was dominant. We wore them down. That 330 pound average, you saw that tonight. You saw all that fat, all that blubber sitting on top of their chest and taking that wind out of them, like Jalen Merrill, like how he got hit. That's exactly how we thought this offensive line was going to play all su all season. They did, but they trust me, they did it tonight in the second half. Um, 
I'm not even going to talk about the first half that much. The first half was just god-awful. It was the same Bama team that we saw in the past. It was god-awful. Um, but yeah, the second half was a completely... It was just a switch. It was different. And I should be excited. I should be happy. I don't want to, and I don't want to sound spoiled. But it pissed me, pisses me off because we knew that this team has this potential. We knew that this team had the opportunity to be to, to, to potentially come great. Like what has Nick Saban talked about in the press conferences? That this team has that this team has what it takes. They just gotta figure it out. And even in the first half, we kept making mistake after mistake after mistake. But I mean, hell, I mean, give the team credit, give our coaching staff credit, give our players credit. They made the adjustments in the second half. They finally figured it out, and a flip was just switched, and they turned into the the, the, the Bama of old. I will say this though before we hit before I end this video, Eric Wofford needs to be fired. He needs to be fired. I I want him fired after the game is over. This offensive line, and that especially in that first half, was pathetic. Absolutely pathetic for three for, for about two and a half games. Now, if Alabama can play like that in the second half, uh, just like the, just like how they play in the second half almost every game, then Eric Walford can keep his job. But if but if, if but if we're gonna go back and we're gonna go back to the way how we play in that first half, he needs to he need, he needs to be out of a job. He needs to be out of a job immediately. That was pathetic what I saw in that first half. But yeah, I'm proud of this team. Proud of the effort. Um, I'm just, a, I don't know. I'm, I'm happy, but I'm pissed at the same time. But overall wise, I, I am proud of this team for fighting through adversity, figuring out a way how to win, even though it was 24 to 10. And a lot of people won't be impressed by that score. That second half, they dominated, completely wore them down. And they could have potentially scored 40 points if it wasn't for mishaps. But overall wise, happy with the performance. And that's just all I can pretty much ask for at this point.